If you're interested in federal government jobs, you need to know the difference between competitive service and accepted service. And a great way to think about competitive service is like a board game. Think about Monopoly. In the competitive service, the game of Monopoly is played by the exact rules that came in the box. Everyone gets their money, their little token. You roll the dice, you move clockwise around the board. We do this because those are the rules in the rule book. But with competitive service, the rule book comes from OPM. They follow those rules. Now in the accepted service, it's not like that. They don't follow those rules. Instead, in the accepted service, we are following house rules, and those rules could change depending on the federal agency. In the competitive service, people go through a competitive process that's open to all the applicants. This process usually consists of an evaluation of the individual's education and experience. Most people who work for the federal government, they're in the competitive service. It's something like 70% of them are in the competitive service. The key to the competitive service is if you meet the eligibility, then the job is open to all applicants. Another thing is it has to be publicly advertised and you will find it on usajobs.gov. Now you can still apply and get hired through the direct hiring authority or even VEOA and be in the competitive service. Even though there's a 12 month probation with a lot of these government jobs, being on probation is not going to dictate what service you're currently in. The accepted service, they hire non-competitively and the process is streamlined. And even though you can find a lot of these jobs on usajobs.gov, they don't have to be posted there. It's used to hire specialized professionals and people of specific backgrounds and hard to recruit jobs. And some examples of this could be a lot of the three letter agencies under the Department of Justice. So CIA, FBI, NSA, all of those type of agencies, for the most part, they hire non-competitively. Also, any non-competitive hiring path like Scheduled A for disabled applicants, or VRA for veterans. If you're hired using one of these ways, if you get into the government, you will be in the accepted service for 24 months. After that, it converts to competitive service. Now, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to tap anyone on the shoulder and say, hey, listen, it's been 24 months. That's not required. What will happen is you'll be at work one day on your computer. You'll have an email come in your inbox and it'll say, updated SF50. And if you click on the link, you'll be able to see your SF50. And then you will notice that HR has made the change in block 34. Then we have the 30% disabled veteran hiring authority. If you're a veteran, you're 30% disabled or more. What I would suggest to you is also look at schedule A. With schedule A, it's a lot easier to get those signatures if you already have a VA letter stating that you have a disability. So this is another way where you can open up more hiring paths for you. The biggest challenge for people in the accepted service is let's say you want to leave your government job. You were there for, I don't know, two, three, four years, you want to leave. If you leave, it's harder to get back into the government because you don't have any preference. You don't have tenure. In order to have tenure in the government, you need to do three years in the competitive service. And then after that, you have tenure for life. That means you can go to the private sector, you can go to the accepted service, you can go wherever you want. And then 5, 10, 15 years later, you can apply for the competitive service or for merit promotion type job announcements. People in the accepted service, they don't have that option. No matter how many years they've done, once they get out of the government, they're going to have to use open to the public job announcements. That's the path that they have to go down unless they have other preferences. So another thing to consider is with certain jobs in the accepted service, you will have an interagency agreement. So this is the case with USPS. So the Postal Service does this. TSA does this. GAO, which is the Government Accountability Office, they also have an interagency agreement with a lot of federal agencies. A problem with this is not every agency has to accept that they're not forced to accept it at all. So you could run into roadblocks later down in your career. And people are often surprised when they, they've spent so many years in the accepted service. I talked to one lady who was in the accepted service for almost 20 years, and she was looking for another position. Shocked, she was completely shocked that she did not have preference to apply to competitive service jobs. And that really takes a large segment of the jobs that are on usajobs.gov it completely removes them. You, you can't even apply, you, you can't even be considered for those type of jobs. Okay, now I wanna focus on some misconceptions, some things that are completely not true. 
And the first one is people seem to think that the benefits are not the same, which isn't true. You still get a pension, you have a TSP, you get locality pay, all that stuff is the same. Another thing that people have a misconception with is it's easier to get fired. That's not true. Whether you're in the accepted service or the competitive service, most of the time these employees, they fall under a union. They still have due process. It doesn't mean that they can someone can snap their fingers and all of a sudden they're fired. It doesn't work that way. Job hopping is a big part of the government culture. People like to hop around to different jobs. So if you think you're going to be doing this, then maybe get your, your first three years as a competitive service employee and that way you can hop around as much as you'd like. But I've been in both. I've been in the competitive service. I've been in the accepted service. Both of them are fine. And I, I didn't see a huge difference with either one of them. So what I would encourage you, the advice that I would offer you is go where the growth is at. So if you have a GS-11 and a GS-12 position, whatever service that GS-12 is in, I would go that way. And always have a bias towards the promotion ladder positions because that's going to save you a lot of time in the long run. I know we talked about competitive service and accepted service. The one service we didn't mention at all is the senior executive service, the SES, the executives. And the main reason for that is it's less than 1% of the entire government. And for the topic of SESs, that probably deserves its own video. Okay, so if you're still looking for federal government jobs, I did a live stream recently. I discussed over a dozen questions about the federal hiring process. A lot of these questions, they could be on your mind. If you're interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.